Hey guys, so by now you should have watched my short video on why sharks are in trouble, covering the history of their downfall over the years. Well now we know why sharks are basically being wiped from the oceans, we need to know why that's bad. One of the most common phrases I've heard over my lifetime is, a good shark is a dead shark. This says a lot about how people just want sharks dead because they see them as some scary, mindless, bloodthirsty potential tornado. But like every underdog superhero in a Marvel movie, sharks are actually worth a lot more alive. And when it comes to the health of the ocean, they are pretty important. Let's explore. The definition of an apex predator is, also known as a top predator, a predator at the top of the food chain, without natural predators. Some sharks are apex predators. Others are keystone species. A keystone species is an organism that helps define an entire ecosystem. So basically, if you think of the ocean as a classroom, and all marine life as out of control school students, think of sharks as the teacher. They truly affect everything around them. Let me give you an example of how deep this goes, from Western Australia. Dugons prefer the nutritious seagrass found in the middle of large grassy patches, but it is very difficult to escape from a tiger shark in these locations. When tiger shark abundance is high, dugons feed on the lower quality seagrass located near a patch's edge, thereby reducing their risk of predation. Dugons alter their distribution on a daily basis, depending on the number and location of sharks in the area. By forcing dugons to change their habitat selection, tiger sharks keep grazing in check, which in turn keeps the seagrass at relatively constant levels. Tiger sharks are indirectly controlling the growth of seagrass, proving how intricate their impact really is. If sharks are removed from our oceans, an imbalance in biodiversity, known as a top-down trophic cascade, can occur. In the past, places where sharks have been removed have been drastically affected by these changes. One town in the USA, for example, relied heavily on its crayfish industry, but they hunted sharks, so stingray populations grew. In return, they fed on the crayfish and nearly wiped them out. The town's fishery collapsed. Coral reefs may also benefit from the protection of sharks. The removal of sharks from a coral reef ecosystem has been shown to trigger an increase of smaller predators that prey on herbivorous fish. Consequently, herbivore populations decline, and without enough herbivores grazing on algae, algae can quickly overgrow a coral reef. This shift from a coral-dominated reef to an algae-dominated reef reduces biodiversity and decreases the resilience of the reef to disturbances such as coral bleaching and storms. Another great reason to keep sharks alive is their value. In the Bahamas, a single live reef shark is worth 250,000 US dollars as a result of dive tourism versus a one-time value of $50 when caught by a fisherman. Bahamas shark diving tourism represents an annual contribution to the local economy of around 800 million US dollars. In Palau, a shark is worth 179,000 a year, or 1.9 million in a typical reef shark's lifespan. Compare this to the going market value of a dead reef shark of about $108. One whale shark in Belize can bring in $2 million over its lifetime, thanks to tourism. In many places around the world, sharks were once hunted. Now they are the biggest asset to the locals through tourism, like the Maldives, where the grandfathers of tourist operators hunted sharks. But these days, they represent so much more worth if kept alive. This is the same for Indonesia. 772,171 tourists visited Indonesia in 2017 to see sharks alive. It was estimated they contributed around 22 million US dollars to the Indonesian economy. If shark populations continue to decline due to insufficient conservation actions, the tourism industry could suffer economic losses from shark and ray tourism of more than 121 million US dollars per year by 2027, as well as detrimental impacts on species, marine ecosystems, fisheries, and people. 
We crunched the numbers to see the value of our impact at Project Hue, with money spent on decommissioning a boat and employing fishermen in tourism, compared to how much that saves the local economy by preventing the capture of valuable sharks. It costs around 9,000 US dollars a year to decommission a fishing boat and employ its five crew in tourism. One year of a boat decommission saves an average of 470 sharks, based on data of trip catch averages. The tourism value of one shark in Indonesia is around 306 US dollars, an estimated base on the tourism value of sharks in Indonesia, which means that one boat saves a number of sharks valued at 153,000 US dollars a year to the tourism economy of Indonesia. So why is something like Project Hiu different and important? Why can't we just make shark fishing illegal? Well, there is a high likelihood legislation will not change to see shark fishing altogether in Indonesia. And even if it did, it would still occur illegally. So the communities need to be the ones enforcing the protection. In addition to this, if they were to ban shark fishing, many families would be thrown into poverty with shark fishing being their main source of income. So in order to protect sharks properly, and the communities that fish them, we have to work on solutions that benefit life above and below the surface, employing them in alternatives that utilize the fishing boats and pay a wage for the fishermen, replacing the need to kill sharks. Most of all, we need a world that understands a good shark is a live shark. I mean, come on. Look at that smile.